All right, so today I want to talk about something that has become very important to me over my time in precision shooting, and especially over the last three weeks, something I've really been concentrating on quite a bit, and that is recoil management. I've talked a lot about recoil management, uh, but I don't believe I've ever actually properly explained uh, how, I, how I personally go about managing my recoil. Now, there's different types of recoil management. Um, there are some types of cartridges that you're going to shoot that don't even require you to manage the recoil, or if they do, very little. The 223s, two um, almost anything that is going to be a, a 6.5 Grendel, a 224 Valkyrie, any of those that are very small cartridges, very little charge, um, light bullets, any of those that don't, don't create a lot of recoil, um, most of those really can be managed by almost just reducing the recoil down to almost nothing. Um, but when you have a cartridge that you cannot stop it from recoiling, um, which is something that I've been working with here recently. I'm getting ready to shoot a, an F-Class match here with my 7 SOM, and part of F-Class is no muzzle brakes. Now, typically when you guys see me shoot my 7 SOM, it has some recoil, but it's very minimal. Um, it's right, in, right along par with the 6 Creed that you guys see me shoot. But recently here, I've had to take the muzzle brake off to get in some practice, uh, make sure that my loads and everything are matching up to elevation without the muzzle brake. So because of that, um, I have no muzzle brake on here and I've been practicing managing my recoil and making my recoil work for me. And that's what I really mean by managing your recoil. So when you have a cartridge that it requires you to make the recoil work for you, how do you go about doing that? Um, I talked about this also a little bit in the videos when I was shooting, when I've been shooting my uh, AR-10 that also has no muzzle brake. That thing has short barrel, um, short gas system has quite a bit of recoil so because of that that's something that I've had to work with managing the recoil on that to make it work for me so when I say managing the recoil what I'm talking about is when a rifle recoils it's going to do whatever it decides to do so if you were to just break a shot put a board behind this rifle that if you were just put put something behind this rifle that is not going to be completely stationary, but just to kind of like a brick or something, just to hold the rifle still and break the trigger, this rifle is not going to recoil straight back towards that board, it's or that brick or whatever. The rifle is going to recoil backwards. It's probably going to come up and to the, to one side or the other. That is absolutely the worst thing that can happen for shot to shot consistency. Unless you can do that every shot consistently, you're never going to have consistency. So when you're managing the recoil, you're going, you're, what you're doing is basically guiding the recoil to go in the direction you want it to go. So when, we want, when, when, when our rifles recoil, we want them to recoil in a perfectly horizontal line. So you don't want your rifle to recoil like this. You don't want your rifle to recoil like this. You want your rifle to recoil like this. Just sliding perfectly as forward and backwards as possible. Now sometimes it's not always possible to get that perfect forward and back motion, but there's a few things that you can do to help, help your rifle to recoil in the right direction. So that's what we're gonna talk about. So how do I go about making a rifle recoil the direction that I want it to go? So first off, and I, lot, there are a lot of shooters who are not big fans of butt hooks. A lot of precision shooters, especially a lot of F-Class shooters, I don't run into many F-Class shooters that prefer a butt hook. But because of the way that I have, have, sh have shot for many years, um, I have become accustomed to shooting with a butt hook. And I also find that that butt hook, if used properly, helps me to manage the recoil almost better than any other tool that I have. Now, like I said, there are many other people who manage to manage their recoil um, without a butt hook with no issues. But for me, I find that the butt hook is one of my favorite tools for managing recoil. Now, what do I mean by butt hook? So here on this, on this Luth AR stock, the butt hook is this right here. It's where you hook your hand into to push it back against your shoulder. But if you push just, when you hook your hand into it, it's very easily to push down into your shoulder or up and into your shoulder. Um, but you've got to make a conscious effort to, and you don't want so much, you, you don't want to use so much effort in pushing it into your shoulder that you induce shaking into the rifle. Because if you try to really muscle something into your shoulder, it's going to cause the rifle to shake. Just like if you muscle anything. If you muscle something too hard, you're going to get that little shake into it. So 
you have to put just the right amount of pressure and it has to be a consistent pressure and you have to make a conscious effort to make sure that that pressure is straight back into your shoulder not to one side or the other but just straight back into your shoulder that way when the rifle recoils you already have a good portion of your energy of the energy that you're putting against the rifle into your shoulder you have a good portion of that coming straight back into you so that rifle is going to that's going to help the rifle along in recoiling straight forward and backwards um, another thing that can help a rifle recoil straight forward and backwards is muzzle brakes but since we're not shooting with muzzle brakes right now um, we're not going to talk about that as much now if you notice the muzzle brake that I typically run here on my 7 SOM is a three port muzzle brake and all the ports are from the side it has two tiny little ports on the top um, but they basically do nothing but the 99.9% .9 of that brake is all coming out from the side and it's all even what that does is it allows perfectly even pressure pushing the rifle forward and back. So that helps along too. So if we're running a muzzle brake, picking the right muzzle brake to allow to allow the rifle to recoil in the right direction is a big part of it. Um, now there are a lot of muzzle brakes that have what they call what they call compensators, um, and those compensators have holes all around them or in the top and those actually sometimes will cause the muzzle of the rifle to be forced down and back and that is a big negative so you want the rifle like I said you don't want it to go up you don't want it to go down you don't want it to go side to side you want it to come in a perfectly horizontal plane so there's a couple other things that I do to help manage the recoil in a forward and back manner so the other thing is something I've talked about, I just did a video on this, is loading your bipod. Now, not only can loading your bipod help in your groups like we demonstrated in that video and where your group impacts um, and how your rifle recoils, but the biggest thing is it, it impacts, how it manages how your rifle recoils, I should say. So if you are loading your bipod, and this bipod here, this is the Atlas 5H, this thing is a really good bipod for loading. So if I am to push forward on this, if you'll notice it's not a whole lot, but there is enough that when I dig my, when I either dig the feet of my bipod into the ground, or um, if I am just on a flat surface like this um, and I have it up against something, like typically I have a piece of uh, a, a bar that I set right here when I'm shooting off my bench. Um, any of those things, anything that I can get some some pressure on, when I lay behind my rifle in, a pro, in the prone position, I spread my legs out um, fairly wide, which allows me to push my body into my rifle. So at the same time that I am pulling the rifle back into my shoulder, I'm also using my entire body to push the rifle forward. So that way when it recoils, not only am I pulling it back into my shoulder with the butt hook, but I am also having it set forward with the preload on the bipod which allows when the rifle recoils for it to have that forward and back motion as you see here and then the last thing that I really do to help me control recoil um, is something that you would honestly not not think matters as much as it really does and that is the direction that you pull the trigger it is so easy now we all know use the pad of your finger put it on your trigger and a slow steady squeeze but it is so easy to put a slow steady squeeze up and you don't see it but you see it in your crosshairs if you squeeze up you will watch the butt muzzle go down ever so slightly if you do that and you squeeze down you will watch the muzzle come up ever so slightly so you want to also, while you're making a conscious effort to load the bipod forward, while you're making that conscious effort to pull the bipod into your shoulder with a perfectly horizontal, with a perfectly horizontal motion so that you're not pulling it side to side, so you're not pulling it up or down, so you're pulling it straight back on a horizontal plane into your shoulder. At the same time, you want to make a conscious effort to 
minutes pull that trigger dark in a straight out. line back into your shoulder. Now you may say, I have a, such a light trigger, it doesn't matter. Every little bit makes a little bit of difference. It takes very little movement side to side, up and down here at the butt of the rifle to make a big difference downrange on your target. So these are the few things that I do that help me manage recoil. Um, that this is what I mean by managing recoil is making the recoil work for me in the right direction. So we're making it so the recoil is not going in any sort of crazy directions, but typically we always, or not typically, we always want it to come straight forward and back. And that's something that I have been practicing quite a bit recently, like I said, since I have the muzzle break off of the SOM here. I'm getting ready to shoot it in an F-Class match next weekend. Um, so I, the last time I had this thing set up with no muzzle break was when I first put the uh, seven SOM, the first seven SOM barrel on here. Um, and I had just ordered my break and didn't have it, hadn't come in yet. So um, I, it's been a long time since I have been able to feel the full recoil of the seven SOM, which isn't a terribly heavy recoiling cartridge, but it's definitely a lot more than what I've been used to with the muzzle break. So. Um, something that I've been working on a lot lately and I've been thinking about it so I figured this would be a good time to do this video. So I hope this is helpful. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.